Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Today we got a pretty cool build. Here we have a kids painted TNT bird. Now, as you can see, this car obviously needs to be restored. Now, some people like the kid painted cars. I, in particular, well, I see it as an opportunity to bring it back to its original glory. So sit back and relax and grab your favorite adult beverage. And let's go ahead and get started with this kid painted TNT bird. I've already drilled the car apart. So we're going to go ahead here and evaluate the parts. Now, every so often I'll get a request from one of the subscribers that says, Hey, how about you show us drilling the car and, and things like that? Well, in the how to section, and I'll leave a little link up in the corner there. I've got a whole bunch of videos on how to take a car apart, how to prepare it for paint, how to paint the car, etc., etc. That way there I don't have to repeat a lot of the steps such as, hey, I've already drilled out the post. So if you go to this video, it will show you how I do that and the size of the drill bits and everything that I use. Well, the base is in pretty rough shape. The body's in rough shape, too, as far as the paint. But, hey, maybe there's some really cool paint job underneath it. So we'll definitely have to take care of that. Yeah, those axles are bent there, so we're going to have to either try and straighten them out or replace them as best we can. Same thing in the front. This is a definitely a pretty well-worn car, so this is going to be a lot of fun. The windshield may have to be replaced, and the interior definitely needs to be scrubbed up and cleaned. But we'll, uh, we'll attack that problem when we get to it. Now the engine will definitely have to be stripped and polished also, but I think we got what we need for that too. Let's move on. Here we're going to put the body in the embalming fluid. Now, since this has got so much paint on it, we're going to make sure that we get this coated really, really well. And we're going to let it sit a little bit longer than normal. I'm running low on the citrus strip here, so I'm going to have to get me to Walmart and get me some more. But uh, I've used the Aircraft Stripper, and I've used a bunch of other brands. Now, the Aircraft Stripper is probably the best one out there. The problem is, is that when you use the Aircraft Stripper... It smells really bad and gives off a lot of nasty fumes. Plus, if you get any on your skin, well, there's another problem you got to deal with, too. It definitely uh, doesn't like human skin. So, I've tried it. It works good. And I work in a garage where I uh, am in tight quarters. So, the fumes for me definitely uh, don't justify using the more expensive, faster product. And that's just my opinion. A lot of people like it and use it. It's a good product. Let's go ahead and let this set for a while. And maybe go into some of the other parts of the cars and get started on those while the paint is starting to come off. I love how the moonlight shines over the mausoleum. <laughs> Here we've got the base. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the brass brush and we're going to try and remove some of that oxidation and excess paint before we put it in the mixture of lime away in water. And uh, this is something that I do on a regular basis. If I've got a lot of paint buildup, I'll take that brush and try and knock off as much of it as I possibly can. And uh, it tends to work out pretty good for me. Now you may have your own system about how you want to do things. This is just a different way of trying, trying new steps. And I always try and use a brass brush if I can. Now sometimes it may call for a steel brush, but you got to really be careful because that steel brush will definitely scratch your metal. And you don't want to do that because that's more polishing you got to do in order to get rid of the scratches. So something to be aware of there. That's starting to come along pretty good. There was a pretty good buildup of paint along the exhaust pipes on the side of the car. Now we'll touch up that base just for giggles and grins. This is definitely going to save you a bunch of time when you put it in the lime away in water. A 
that's looking good now we do got a little bit of paint built up inside the crevices of the exhaust pipes there so we'll pick it out with the razor knife or if you got a little dental pick or something that'd be cool I went ahead and took off the axles now we're gonna soak it in a mixture of lime away and water now this is a 50 50 mixture um, you can keep using this stuff if you make yourself up a small batch you can use this stuff until it looks or feels like it isn't effective anymore and when that happens mix yourself up some more pour the other stuff out put it in there for about three and a half to four minutes but keep an eye on it to make sure that the base is not turning black which will happen if you leave it in the mixture too long here I've sped this up six times speed and uh, it's pretty cool how it develops the little uh, currents in there from the uh, bubbling action of the oxidation being eaten away okay that's been about three minutes let's go ahead and pull it out there notice how I'm wearing my my gloves here and also while I'm doing this I'm also wearing safety glasses you want to make sure that you're wearing your safety glasses especially because if you get this lime away in your eyes it's not gonna feel really good so please wear your proper safety gear I mean technically I should have a second glove on and I don't but I should so please wear your safety gear dip it in keep scrubbing with the brass brush and then after all this is done we're going to go ahead and polish it up with the flitz polish these things really come to life when you clean them up especially if they've been uh, sitting for a very long time and the oxidation is built up on there but when you start removing the the old paint and the oxidation and shining it up man i tell you there's there's nothing in this hobby that's more satisfying than taking a car from what looked like it was dead and bringing it back to life now here like I said we're gonna polish up that base and I've got my flitz polish ready to go I absolutely love this product and folks if, if you're not using the flitz polish you should now I got this particular uh, tube at Ace Hardware but you can get it at Lowe's and Home Depot and Walmart etc and if not I have it on my Amazon marketplace page and there is a link in the comments to go to my Amazon marketplace page now with the marketplace page I only make a few pennies off there and I put the page up as a convenience to you that way there you don't have to go searching for things if you're having a hard time finding them so check out the marketplace page in the comment section of this video here we've sped up the polishing and it's unbelievable like I said how fast this flitz product works and it doesn't take too much speed on your Dremel either you don't even got to have it on the highest speed on your Dremel just enough to start buffing it out because if you get it too high it gets too hot and it starts to burn and you don't want to do that that's looking good now all we have to do now is wipe it down and we'll be good to go okay I checked out the axles here and they're bent up pretty bad so I'm not gonna use these but I am gonna save them because you never know when you might need some if you don't have any so I took the axles out of a donor TNT bird and I put them in now I'm gonna put on these beautiful meats here from the red line shop I got two medium tires from the front and I got two medium tires for or large tires for the back excuse me and uh, there we go four brand new meats on the car and yeah I call the wheels meats because when you put that meat to the ground and you put that power to it it's amazing it's absolutely amazing now I'm gonna do a little bit of detail here I've already done the tail end and I used a red sharpie marker that looks really nice and I used uh, gonna use this black sharpie permanent marker here for the grill trying to draw around the Thunderbird logo inside the grill go ahead and fill it in as best you can now you can do this with paint by using a toothpick or some type of other small brush the Sharpie is just as good when it comes to doing this if you get any on there you can wipe it off with your thumb or your finger or you can just use a little bit of alcohol or paint thinner to remove it that looks fantastic let's move on now we need to get the body ready 
I took an uh, abrasive roller there on the end of my Dremel, the, the one that looks like the scotch Bright pad, and I got it rid of a lot of the toning. Now I'm going to use this steel wool and polish up some of those scratch marks and get rid of those. The uh, small abrasive wheels there are, are available on my Amazon Marketplace page and uh, they work out pretty good. Like I said, it's like a scotch Bright pad, but it's on the end of a, uh, a drill bit or a Dremel bit. So you can go ahead and, and use this to get rid of all your toning problems and uh, sand it down. Now, you can only use it for one car, though, because they wear out pretty darn quick. The harder you push, the more pressure, the quicker they wear away, so be careful. And they do throw debris, so wear your glasses. Here I'm using flits again to polish up this body. This is going to look fantastic. Once I got rid of that toning on the car, this was uh, wonderful and it polished it up really super nice. And it doesn't take long when you're using your Dremel and you're polishing this up. This is going to look fantastic. Take your time, go over all the areas. Now if your Dremel's going too fast, it'll buck on you a lot. So turn the speed down, you don't need it that fast. That's looking good. Let's go ahead and speed this up. That looks really nice. Wipe it down really good. And then when you're done with this, you want to take it to the sink and get you some degreaser. Now I use Zep degreaser. You can also use Super Clean. But use that degreaser. Scrub it down with a nice soft bristle toothbrush. Get into all your cracks and crevices. And you'll get rid of that wax that you just put on there or that flitz polish that you just put on there also. If you see any spots on there that need to be polished some more, put some more flits on there and do it again. Man, that's looking good. Let's go ahead and move on to the painting section. Here we're going to use a root beer brown. Now I don't use this color very often, but man is it absolutely gorgeous. And then I'll use this Red Line Shop Activator to go ahead and uh, put into the paint so it helps harden it up. Now normally if you do the steps properly, you're not going to have to clear coat over the top of your uh, paint job there. Nope, got a little fuzz on there. Make sure you blow away all the dust and the excess. Got a little fuzzy thing there in the corner next near the uh, roof pillar. Huh. I guess there's a little pinch there from where the pillar meets the roof, like it was cracked a little bit or something and got some fibers caught in there. But we'll get rid of those. All right, make sure you get the underside of the car first. Get all those hard to reach areas up in the fender wells, up underneath the hood, underneath the trunk, and in the wheel wells where you can see. Spray the inside of the car that way there. If you can see inside the car and the interior sets a little bit low, all you'll see is the brown paint or whatever color you're using. Make sure you get it good using a tack coat, just a very, very light coat for the first couple of times. That way there it gives the other paint that you're spraying on later here a little something to hold on to, or as I say, a tooth to bite with. Make sure you go the entire length of the car, the whole body. There you go. Up underneath and down the length of the other side. There you go. That's looking good. That's looking really nice. The secret to these good paint jobs, folks, is the tack coat. Check out all the other colors that they have at the Redline Shop. they got an incredible array of colors for you to try. 
Let's go ahead and let this set for about 10 or 15 minutes and we'll come in and put some saturation coats. Here's your base all cleaned up and ready to go. Got those deep dish wheels on there from the Redline shop. They look fantastic. Here's the engine. We got that all polished up. And here's all of our parts. We sprayed the black vinyl roof on top using uh, paint from the Redline shop, the black vinyl paint. Now, you don't clear coat over that and you don't mix it with hardener. That is one of the things with this paint. And you can use it straight out of the bottle. Just very light coats and you'll get a really nice vinyl rooftop. I did have to replace the windshield because this one cracked up a bit and it uh, I had to glue it together. Interior looks good. The engine's polished. That looks good. The base looks good. Let's put it together and do our reveal. Meanwhile, back in the graveyard. And here's what we started with. This kid-painted TNT bird. Man, this thing definitely has seen a lot of miles for sure. But we took it apart. We got rid of the old paint. We changed out the wheels and the axles with a donor set. We cleaned up the interior. We polished the engine. We polished the car. Put on a beautiful root beer Spectre Flame paint, paint job on there. And uh, we did a black vinyl roof on top. And uh, this build was a lot of fun. My friend Tom, this car is for you. And uh, it was a lot of fun doing this car. And I really enjoyed it. This is going to be fantastic. And this is what we got to. Look at the beautiful paint job here. This Spectre Flame Root Beer paint from the Redline shop. The black vinyl roof, that just sets it off. The body has been polished with the tail lights and the headlights detailed out, or at least the grill. Brand new deep dish wheels from the Redline shop. Man, you could not ask for a better restoration than this kid painted TNT bird. I had a lot of fun with this, and I hope you had a lot of fun watching this video. Now, if there's anything you'd like to see in the future, just please let me know. Leave a message in the comments, and I'll get back to you, I promise, because I read every single one. Now, if you have some red lines or other cars you need to have restored, I will take red lines and trade for doing that for you. So please contact me. The email is there. And you can look it up and uh, send me a private message and we'll get back to you and we'll discuss what you need to have done. What a fantastic job. I really enjoyed this. I'd like to introduce you to my Patreon team. Grim Reaper Level, William K. Seven Robinson, Dale Johnson, Matt Miller, and new member Andre Triplett. Mortician Level, Air Warrior Coffee Company, Jake Rademacher, Jason Warren, Ricky Montavo and Sam Pascal. Funeral Director, Diecast Sheriff on YouTube, Double B's Customs on YouTube, Dave Christensen, Todd Binney, Ryan Goldstein, new member Mid Island Custom Diecast on YouTube, Gravedigger Level, Aaron Murphy, Andrew Hitchens, Bob DeNice, Chris Decker, Grizz Flowers, John Holman, John Sellers on YouTube, Johnny and William Hicks, Keith Kripe, he's got a great build coming up. Leroy, Les Jenkins, Michael Oxley, Richie Ramos, Stacy Wright, Trevor DeViz, and new member Donald Rashik. Paul Bearer Level, Daryl Begtel, Gary Tasker, and Milesium 487. Hearst Drivers, Adam Bowen, Diecast Pirate, Jason Saylor, Jim Silva on YouTube, Joe Pierce, Pete Langford, Pin Tony, Richard Reese, Michio Woods Garage on Facebook. Check out his Facebook sales for Hot Wheels. Somo Diecast on YouTube, Scott Turner, Steve Terrence, Tony Hughes, Wade Hendricks, Devil's Decals Diecast on YouTube, and new member Randy Helsel. Thank you. The link to join Patreon is in the comments. I sure could use your help. This video was brought to you by the Redline Shop. The Redline Shop offers a complete line of decals, tools to take your car apart, put them back together, replacement hoods, replacement glass, those beautiful red line tires, and of course the world-famous Spectre Flame paints. Fantastic products. 
The Redline Shop at www.redlineshop.com, where red lines come to life. I want to say thank you to uh, you folks for watching my videos and subscribing to my videos. 2020 has been a crazy year, but I'm glad that I could uh, provide these videos for you. Um, a lot of videos coming up. Stay tuned. My name is Paul with Diecast Graveyard. Happy Holidays.